Hey everybody, this is Russ from Metro Game Core. Today we're going to review a new Ambernic device called the RG35XX2024. And chances are this one looks pretty familiar. It's now the third vertical handheld they've released with the RG35XX name. Now, every time that Ambernic releases a new handheld, which is pretty frequently, I find myself trying to figure out where it fits within the whole handheld ecosystem. And generally, it'll take me a few days to really figure out who this is gonna match for the best. Well, I have to say that over the past 20 or so Ambernic devices that I've reviewed and tested on this channel, this is the one where I just cannot find a target audience. This 2024 model is both an up upgrade and a downgrade compared to other Ambernic models, and it's in direct competition with other Ambernic devices that are better and can be found for cheaper. As you can imagine, we've got a lot to unpack in this video, so maybe pop yourself some popcorn and let's go ahead and get started. Okay, let's start by talking about the specs. Now, for all intents and purposes, this is almost identical to the original RG35XX that came out about a year and a half ago. So it does have the same 3.5 inch LCD panel with a 480p resolution. The only upgrade is going to be the chip. It now has the quad core H700 processor. This is the same one that we found in the RG35XX Plus, which came out about six months ago. However, the Plus model had a bunch of other improvements that this one does not have. For example, the new 2024 model that we're reviewing here today has the same size battery as the original model, which is 2600 milliamp hours. Meanwhile, the Plus model, which came out between these two, had an upgraded battery size of 3300 milliamp hours. In addition, that upgraded Plus model also had Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, and this one that we're reviewing here today sadly does not. Next, I want to talk about price, because this is where things get really interesting, but also a bit confusing. To start, if you go to the Ambernic website and you look at the new model, the 2024 one, you can see that it is going for $50 USD. But bear in mind that Ambernic's website also charges for shipping, so it's going to be about 10-15 bucks depending on where you live. That means you can expect to pay about $65 if you were to buy this new model directly from Ambernic on their website. And if we look at the older model, which is still up for sale on their website as of making this video, it's also being sold for that same price of $50 plus shipping. And if we take that into context of the upgraded Plus model, the one that came out six months ago, this one is more expensive on their website. It's $64 again with shipping. So if you're only sticking to their website and not looking for sales or anything else like that, you can expect to pay about 75 bucks for this upgraded model compared to 60 or $65 for the new one that we're reviewing today. However, the Ambernic website is not the only place where you can buy these devices, and if you ask me, it's probably not one of the best that you can buy if you're looking for the best bang for your buck. And one of my favorite places to look for some of these cheaper handhelds is on AliExpress, because you can find some great deals. And if we look at the Ambernic AliExpress listing, you can see that they're selling it for $62 on their website with free shipping. So depending on where you live and if Ambernic charges a bunch on their website to ship, then it might be cheaper just to get it here with free shipping. However, once we start shopping around on AliExpress, this is where things start to fall apart. And a lot of that has to do with the fact that the other RG35XX models have been on the market for a while now, and so we're seeing a lot of discounts. Even if we just look at the other offerings on the Ambernic store right now, the RG35XX original model is going for 48 bucks. And bear in mind that's also with free shipping, so we're looking at a price difference of about $15 between the two. But things get even more wonky when we look at the RG35XX Plus. This one is actually cheaper than the new model that just came out. If we use the Ambernic store within AliExpress, you can see that, yeah, it's only $56 on their listing. And I've seen a bunch of sales over the past couple weeks on AliExpress where this device has gone down to like $48 altogether. And so this is kind of what I mean overall when I'm talking about it being both an upgrade and a downgrade, but then also in direct competition with other devices that you can find for cheaper. And so hopefully this device will go for cheaper, but right now $62 just seems kind of outrageous considering the fact that we can get a better model for $56. Anyway, now that we have an idea of how much this thing is going to cost, let's move on to the unboxing. Now this was a review unit sent over from Ambernic, but as always, all opinions are my own. They're not seeing this ahead of time and no money was exchanged in any way. Looking at the box, the only difference between the original and this one is the fact that it now has four colors listed. The original model only had three different colors, so the transparent black option is actually new for the RG35XX 2024. Anyway, inside the box, in addition to the device, we will get a quick instruction manual, as well as a screen protector and wipe, and then we also get a USB-A to USB-C charging cable. So let's take a look at the device itself, and yeah, this one's the transparent black model. 
I think it looks pretty good. I like the fact that the buttons are all black, and I also like the texture of their transparent models. The plastic texture is a little bit gritty, and I really like that because it allows me to grip onto this device very easily. I also like the smoky black look of the transparent models as well. And as far as I can see, when it comes to the shell, yeah, this looks exactly identical to the original RG35XX. Let's do a couple quick tests of the buttons and controls just to make sure everything is the same. And yes, we've got some rubber membrane buttons. They're a little bit stiff, but nice and responsive. And yeah, they feel identical to the original model. And same thing with the D-pad. We've got a bouncy rubber membrane going on here. And again, it just feels very similar to what we've tested before. So I'm not gonna spend a ton of time going over these controls just because they are very similar to other devices we've been testing over the past couple of years. But I will note that yeah, the start and select and the menu buttons are all hard plastic like they were before. And on the back we have our shoulder and trigger buttons that are all flat in a row like they were on the original model. Bear in mind that these shoulder buttons do protrude a little bit from the shell and so it makes it a little bit less pocketable but still not bad. In terms of I.O. we've got a mini HDMI output so you'll be able to connect this to a TV or monitor. On the right side we've got our power and reset button as well as two different SD card slots. And by default these handhelds are going to come with a 64 gigabyte card which is going to be of a generic brand and it will be preloaded with a bunch of games. On the bottom, we've got a headphone jack as well as the USB-C port that can be used for both charging and plugging in accessories. And then finally, on the left, we've got our volume rocker up and down. Now, in addition to the transparent black model that they sent over, they sent over the original gray model as well. So here's a direct comparison between the two. Personally, I like the gray one better just because it has an older DMG Game Boy kind of style to it. But I do appreciate that we have multiple color options, and these two in particular look pretty sharp. Now let's do a couple comparisons against the original model just to make sure that I'm not taking crazy pills here. So on the left is the original RG35XX model, which came out in late 2022. And for all intents and purposes, these two look identical. The only difference I could find is that the coloring of the labels are a little bit brighter blue on the right side compared to the left. And yeah, other than that, I think it's the exact same shell. If we take a look at the back, there's also a couple minute differences. The first I saw is that the new model seems to have a little bit darker gray buttons compared to the previous one. And then also the label on the back is a little bit different. You can see that the left one says RG35XX and then the right one says RG35XX+. I thought that was kind of ironic considering the fact that this is not the Plus model, this one is the 2024 model. So maybe at some point they were going to upgrade this and call this one the Plus, but then they went and did the full upgrade. I'm not really sure what the backstory is here, but it is super confusing that they have a Plus model and then another model which is not the Plus, but is labeled as the Plus. Let's now shift over and do the new model on the right, but then the RG35XX Plus on the left. And right off the bat, you can see there are a couple differences. The first is the fact that the Plus model has a black bezel around the screen. And I think between the two, I actually prefer the gray bezel. It just has a bit of a more old school kind of look to it. In addition, you can see that the positioning of the menu and select and start buttons are a little bit different on the Plus compared to the 2024 model. And in terms of I.O., it looks to be mostly identical. So here's the top as well as the left side and then the bottom. There's some tiny little shell differences, but other than that, they look the same. Now things do get more interesting on the back. If we look on the left side with the Plus model, this one comes with a battery compartment. That's really great if you want to swap out the battery without having to take out the entire shell. In addition, you can see that even though these are both labeled as Plus, the one on the left, which is the True Plus, had upgraded shoulder and trigger buttons. And I do enjoy the slow pattern on the Plus model. It makes the trigger buttons, in particular the L2 and R2 buttons, a lot easier to press down on and differentiate from the shoulders. And again, you can see with the labeling that both of these are labeled as plus, but one is written out plus and the other one just has the symbol. This is super confusing. Next, we're going to do a little bit of hardware testing to see how this D-pad performs between the three. We're going to start with the original RG35XX running Garlic OS, and we're going to do the Contra test. Now, one of the things I didn't like about the original 35XX was the fact that the D-pad was just a little bit touchy for my own tastes. For example, when doing this test and I'm pressing down on the D-pad and then rocking left and right, you can see that the character moves quite a lot. And for me, I prefer it when a character moves a little bit, like I have to deliberately push to the left and the right to actually get it to move. But here with the original RG35XX, I always found it to be just a little bit too easy 
to get the character to go. And what this means from a gameplay perspective is that with certain games like this, you might accidentally hit the diagonal when you don't want to, and so this is always something you would want to avoid. Next, let's try out the new one that we're reviewing today, so the RG35XX 2024 model. And doing the exact same test with the exact same game, we are getting the exact same results. Now bear in mind there's always a bit of variance in manufacturing between these different D-pads, but at least for me and my own testing, these feel to be the exact same. And finally, I want to test the RG35XX Plus. This is the one that came out six months ago. And this one, I remember when I first tested it, it had an improved D-pad experience in the fact that yes, the character does move a little bit, but it takes more force than on the other model to actually get it to go. And so for me, this is an ideal where we're not going to have as many accidental diagonals, but we still have the ability to hit a diagonal if we want. And so bearing in mind that there is some variance with these D-pads and the whole D-pad lottery thing, I still think that the RG35XX Plus is the best among the bunch. Okay, next I want to do a teardown of these three devices. It's pretty easy to actually break these down. You just need a torque screwdriver to remove these six screws, and then you need something like a spudger or a guitar pick to go around the edges and undo all the clips. From there, you can unplug the battery and you should be able to separate the two components. Now here I've got the original 35XX on the far left, and then in the middle we've got the Plus, and then on the right we've got the one we're reviewing today, the 2024 model. And for the most part, the design between the three is very similar. You can see that there are some slight differences in the board, for example where the speaker cable is connected, but overall, yeah, they look very, very similar. One of the major differences are the shoulder button components and the micro switches underneath. If we look at the Plus model, you can see that the micro switches, which are these little blue buttons right here, do stick out a little bit from the PCB. By comparison, if we look at the 35XX or the 2024 model, they're a little bit more flush. Now looking at the back shells, there are quite a few differences. For example, on the original 35XX model that I have, I have the old battery on it. It was only 2100 milliamp hours. And very few of these models were made. After that, they upgraded it to 2600 milliamp hours. Now we can't see the battery on the middle device because it now has a plastic housing around it, but this one one is 3300 milliamp hours, so it does give you quite a bit more battery life than the others. And you can also tell it's the Plus model because it has the Wi-Fi antenna attached here to the back. Now, just a moment ago, I mentioned that the shoulder button micro switches were a little bit different, but you can see that the mechanism between the two is very similar. Here's a look at the Plus again, and then also now the 2024 model. So the mechanism between the two and how you press the button seems to be the same, but that the Plus model just sticks out a little bit more. And again, here's another look at the slope triggers and shoulders compared to the original and the 2024 model. And like I mentioned, between the two, I would definitely prefer using the Plus model when it comes to these shoulders and triggers. And the last thing that I wanted to compare against these PCBs is that the labeling is different. The new model is dated March 8th, 2024. Happy International Women's Day to everyone. And the old model, bear in mind that I have a very old version of this device, is dated October 18th of 22. Either way, just shy of ripping off this heat shield to see what chips are underneath, this seems to be identical in terms of design. Next, let's talk about the out-of-box software experience for the new 2024 model. This one will be running an updated version of their stock firmware. I've talked about this one quite a bit in the past, but let's do a quick breakdown. To start, my biggest point is that this is a functional operating system. It boots up pretty quickly, only takes about 19 seconds altogether, and for the most part, it will allow you to get in and out of your games without getting too much in your way. And in terms of updates, they have upgraded the overall visual style. I think it looks actually pretty sharp right now. And choosing between your different options is relatively simple. On the far left, they've got an option called Game Room. And this is where you're going to find your standalone emulators. So you can browse through the different systems, then choose your game and launch it from there. However, when it comes to these standalone emulators, the only one I recommend playing with this device is going to be the PSP emulator. That one will give you the best performance. For everything else, I would recommend using the RetroArch section, which is going to be the next one. It's called RA Game. Within here, you'll see all those same systems that we saw previously, but they're going to boot with a RetroArch core instead. And I found that across the board, this one will give you the most consistent performance among all of them. And again, booting up these games is very simple. You're just going to pick your system, then browse through the game. Again, this is going to be preloaded. And once you're ready to start up game, you'll press the A button to get into it, and then you'll press menu and start together to exit out of the game. They did a pretty good job organizing these games. Most of them will be the North American counterparts, and they have box art for most of the games as well. We've also got a couple handy functions. For example, if you press the start button while hovering over a game, it'll make it a favorite. And that'll add it to the favorites list, and if you want to unfavorite it, you would just press the start button again. And this makes navigation a lot easier, especially with a card that has a bunch of games on it. Bear in mind that the favorites list will be populated in order of when you favorited it. It's not in alphabetical order. To the right of that, we have our history section. So if you 
want to go back and play a game that you played previously, you can access it here. Going further to the right, we have our search function, and this also works pretty well. As soon as you start typing in the name of a game or series, you'll be able to start seeing games pop up immediately. So if you want to quickly browse through all of the Mega Man games on this device, you can just type in the word Mega and then check it from there. But one thing to keep in mind is Ambernick strips all mentions of the word Mario out of these games lists. So if you want to play any Mario game, you'll have to load them yourself onto the SD card. And then finally, on the far right, we have our settings menu. Within here, you've got quite a few different configuration options. This is where you can go to adjust the screen brightness or to remove the button sounds as you're navigating through the menu. And you can also boot directly into RetroArch from here if you want to make any sort of configuration changes. Anyway, that's a quick rundown of the stock operating system. It's not the prettiest in the world, but it is functional, and so I do appreciate that. However, because this device uses the same chip as the RG35XX+, Plus, I want to test to see whether or not the same firmwares that have been made by the community also work on this device. So for our testing, we're going to try out Bodicero, which is my current favorite to use on the RG35XX+, Plus and H models. And I just did a final review on those models a couple weeks ago, and so if you want to check out more about this operating system, I would recommend that video. Either way, sure enough, yeah, it boots, but it takes quite a while to actually get started. And I think a lot of this probably just has to do with the fact that the developer hasn't gotten their hands on this device yet, and so they haven't optimized it. Either way, it took me about a minute and 10 seconds to actually get into the menu, and it's quite a bit longer than on the other devices that run this version of Bodicera. It usually only takes about 20 seconds. Now, one of the reasons why I like Bodicera so much is because it has a beautiful menu system. You can download and customize different themes for it, and then also when you're navigating through the games, you'll be able to scrape and see your box art, and then if you hover over the game for a little bit, it'll also show a video. And so this has always been one of my favorite navigation experiences overall. It uses an emulation station front end. Now, one of the major components of getting Bodicera really optimized is the ability to use Wi-Fi. And like I mentioned at the beginning of this video, this new 2024 model does not have a Wi-Fi chip. So if we go into the network settings and try to connect to a network, it's not going to show any networks at all. Now, the next thing I wanted to test was to see whether or not a Wi-Fi USB dongle would work on this device as well. And for testing, I usually use one of these two different Wi-Fi models. And between the two, I found that just about every handheld that is capable of using Wi-Fi USB will work. However, unfortunately, no matter what I tried in my testing, I couldn't get either to work. I even restarted the device, tried to plug it in when it was turned off, plugged it in after it was turned on, all that other kind of stuff. And unfortunately, it just never detected the Wi-Fi. Now, I don't know if this is a firmware thing or a hardware issue. Either way, yes, unfortunately, I was not able to connect to the internet, even when using a USB dongle. And that's a shame because many of the things that make Bodicera so good rely on the internet, for example, using retro achievements or downloading new themes. So as it stands right now, this device is an offline handheld, and that might work well for you depending on whether or not you want to actually connect your devices to the internet. Either way, let's go ahead and do some game testing just to make sure that everything boots correctly and Bodicera as well. And yeah, sure enough, all these games booted up just fine and included all my original configurations for this Bodicera build. So I do think this is a bonus for that 2024 model in the sense that at a day one release, yes, it has custom firmware that works for it. And by and large, this is a good gaming experience. The fact that you can just boot into all these games and play all the way up to like Dreamcast and Nintendo 64 because of this more powerful chipset is pretty nice. However, like I've mentioned in other videos, there are drawbacks to using a device like this with a more powerful chipset, but with the controls that we have present. For example, yes, it is capable of playing things like Nintendo 64 and Dreamcast, but it may present a problem if you're trying to play a game that uses an analog stick control. Here's an example with Diddy Kong Racing, which can play on this device just fine, but it relies on an analog stick to both navigate the menu as well as to move your character around while in game. And unfortunately, the emulators that work best with this particular game do not have the ability to remap your controls. And so for a game like Diddy Kong Racing, even though it is capable on this chip, it's mostly unplayable on this device. For other systems like Dreamcast and PSP, you are able to remap the controls. And so even if it's a game like Sonic Adventure 2 that does require analog input, you can just map that to the D-pad instead. And that's because this game works well with the RetroArch core, which will allow you to change out those controls. Either way, with even those limitations in place, I think that gameplay up to PS1 and even the games that don't require analog input are going to play just fine all the way up to Dreamcast and Nintendo 64. And so if we're just comparing it to the 35XX that came out about a year and a half ago, yes, this is an upgrade in the sense that you can play more systems and the performance will be pretty good. However, there is a difference between the two that is pretty significant and it doesn't have to do with gameplay, it has to do with operating system options. And that's because on the original RG35XX, we had Garlic OS. 
This was a community software originally built for this device, but then further co-opted by Ambernic, and then it was actually shipped with it later on. And I'm a huge fan of Garlic OS on the original RG35XX. It has a much more simple menu interface, and you can also customize it here and there. For example, I've changed the justification of the font so that it's on the right side, and then I've also added box art to the left side. And I've got a whole written guide on how to set up Garlic OS on the original RG35XX, and I think it's a really great experience. In addition to having a nice and simple user interface, getting in and out of your games is a joy on Garlic OS as well. The games are going to boot up super fast and they auto save and auto load so you can get right back to where you were the last time you were playing. To exit out of a game you just tap on the menu button, it'll take you right back to the main menu, and then from there you can just jump into the next game, it's super simple. In addition, while in the main menu, if you also tap on that menu button, it'll bring up a quick launch option. Here it's going to show you a sample of all the games that you've been playing previously, and you'll be able to go right back to where they are as you see on the screen screen. And this feature is one of my favorites. It's also very similar to what you can find on Onion OS with the Mio Mini Plus. Long story short, that's one of the main strengths of the original RG35XX is Garlic OS. The fact that we had a very simple user interface and we could jump in and out of our games with relative ease. Unfortunately, as an after effect of upgrading the chipset, the new RG35XX2024 is not compatible with this older version of Garlic OS. There is a version of Garlic that's been made for this chipset, but it's still in an alpha state and it's not not really worth showing off. And so again, this is something that I would consider to be maybe a downgrade compared to the original RG35XX. And so personally, if I had to choose between using Garlic OS on the original RG35XX or having the upgraded chipset but losing Garlic OS on the new model, I would choose the original over the new one. And that's because when it comes to this device, I tend to favor PS1 and below games anyway, and that user experience is better on Garlic OS compared to what you can find on stock. But before we get too far into comparisons, let's bear in mind that there's also a third device that we have to keep in mind. So I think this next component of the video is me talking about what we're going to do when it comes to these three different models and which ones I recommend and why. Bear in mind that as we go through this comparison process, the original RG35XX will probably get phased out here very soon. And so while I am doing a three-way comparison between these models, by the time you're watching this video, there may only be the two models to choose from, and so just kind of keep that all in mind as we go through. Either way, let's go back and reassess our three different contenders. On the far left, we have the RG35XX running Garlic OS. In the middle, we've got the new RG35XX2024 edition, which can run the new updated stock OS as well as some of the custom firmwares that were made for the third device, which is the RG35XX+. And just for brevity's sake, the major differences between these three is that the 35XX on the far left has a slower chipset, and then the 2024 and the Plus models on the right have the upgraded chipset, and then the one on the far right has Wi-Fi and Bluetooth and a bigger battery and better shoulder and trigger buttons. And so among all the different testing that we've done so far, the operating system experience as well as the physical components, how would I rank these three devices? And for me, it's pretty simple. On the far left, my number one choice is going to be the RG35XX+, Plus, and then my second choice is going to be the old RG35XX because of Garlic OS. And then finally, as you surmised already, the device we're reviewing today comes in a third place. And so the reason why I prefer the Plus over the other two is the fact that one, this one has Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. Those are very important components for me. But then it also has that upgraded chipset to allow me to play things like Dreamcast and Nintendo 64. And it can also run Botocera and all the features that come with it, including retro achievements, as well as downloading new themes. The original RG35XX comes in second place for me because of Garlic OS and the ability to use that quick menu function, but then also just the overall ease and simplicity of using it in general. And like I mentioned, when playing a vertical device like this without an analog stick, I tend to prefer to play PS1 and below games anyway. And then finally, of course, we have our bronze medal winner, which is going to be the 35XX2024 edition. Now, don't get me wrong, it's not a bad device by any means. If it just dropped into your lap, I think you would have a ton of fun actually playing all the games that you can play on it. But we don't live in a vacuum, and there are other devices available on the market. And among all the vertical Ambernic devices, these are the three and how I rank them. However, if you're in the market for a cheap vertical handheld, these three are not my top pick. Like I mentioned in my RG35XX Plus review a couple weeks ago, I prefer the Mio Mini Plus as my small and cheap vertical handheld. This one can also perform up to PS1 and Nintendo DS, but it also has Wi-Fi, and I also prefer the controls on this over the Ambernic ones. In addition, the Mio Mini Plus is a little bit smaller vertically, but then also a little bit thinner and lays flush on a table. And that's because the shoulder buttons don't protrude like on the 
Amernic models, which makes it a little bit more pocketable too. So if you are looking for a cheap vertical handheld, I still think the Mio Mini Plus is the one to get. And then finally, not to rub more salt into the wound, if we're talking about the 35XX devices, I actually prefer the horizontal model, the H model, over the vertical ones. And again, this is something I went into more detail about in my review video a couple weeks ago, but it really comes down to the fact that I find horizontal devices to be more comfortable. In addition, the H model, even though it is a little bit taller when you put it on its side, it's a lot thinner and more pocketable. And then finally, the thing that really really pushes it over the edge for me is the fact that it has analog sticks, which means that games like Nintendo 64 and Dreamcast are just going to play effortlessly. And it's also got stereo speakers compared to the mono speaker that's on all of the vertical handhelds. And finally, to top all of this off, Ambernick is not stopping the RG35XX train. They actually already have another device that they're teasing on social media. We think this one's going to be called the RG35XX SP, and as you can see, it's a clamshell like the Game Boy Advance SP. And this one will use the same chipset as the RG35XX Plus and the 2024 model that we're reviewing here today. So of course, be on the lookout for this one, and I'm hoping it'll release in the next couple months. And so when it comes down to it, if we're only looking at Ambernic devices that are vertical and also around the $60 or $50 price point, then yes, I prefer the RG35XX Plus. At the end of the day, it's really hard to figure out why Ambernic even released the RG35XX 2024 edition in the first place. And I have a couple ideas, but they're all unfounded. I don't have any sort of insider connection connection to how Ambernic chooses to make their devices. All the same, the only thing I can think of is that they ran out of chips for the original RG35XX, but had a bunch of leftover shells. And so rather than scrapping the chips and PCBs that they made for this handheld, they decided to just put that new chip inside instead. And maybe they were hoping that nobody would notice the difference between the two and consider this to be an upgrade over the other one. But as I showed in this video, I don't really consider this to be much of an upgrade at all. In fact, this device seems to be relatively pointless when you compare it to other devices that they also release. And if Ambernic is going to charge $50 for this device, then it makes even less sense. The only way I can see this device really succeeding in the market that they've created is to sell it for a lot cheaper. I would say like $30 or $40. Because as it stands right now, if you've got around $50 or $60 to spend, I wholeheartedly recommend the RG35XX Plus or the H models instead. Anyway, that's really about it for this video. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Why do you think Ambernic made this in the first place? And is there any desire on your part to even pick this one up? Like I mentioned, unless they can drastically reduce the price point, I just don't really see why anyone would want this over the Plus model. As always, thank you for watching, and be sure to like and subscribe if you found this helpful, and we will see you next time. Happy gaming.